Today, I want to walk you through a really interesting TypeScript problem and solution. This is one that I have not seen talked about in many other places, but it's something I run into pretty often in my day to day work. Now, there's many ways that you could create the scenario that we're going to talk about here, but we're going to use a really basic example of an object with a getter and a setter. So we've got this prop type here. And as you can see, it's just an object with a get function and a set function. We take some generic T, the get should return that T, and the set should take that T. So if you have an object that matches this prop shape, then the value that you get from our get function, you should be able to pass to our set function because they both have the type T. So now we have a helper function here that just creates these properties. We take some value T and we return the getter and setter using that value as our initial value. And then we create an object with multiple properties in it. Now this is the key part, right? So we've got this object and you can see exactly what the shape of this object is. It's got a name with a prop of string and an age with a prop of number. And then just to be complete, we're going to pull some types out of this. So we've got type of props and then key of props as well. So what is the problem that we're going to have here? Well, as you can see on lines 21 to 23, we don't have a problem at all when we know the key that we're indexing into. So if I say props.name and I assign that to A, then I can do A.get and you can see B here has a type of string and then I can do A.set and we have no problem at all because set takes a string and B is a string. Makes sense. The problem comes when we want to do some metaprogramming. We have a function X here that takes a key and this key, as we know, is going to be one of the props of our props object. Now we get our property object and assign it to the variable y by indexing in with k, right? Props at k. This works, of course, because we know that k is a key of props, so there's no problem there. And then we get our value and we assign that to z here or z. And you can see we do y.get, no problem. But then when we do y.set, passing it z, we have an error. Argument of type string or number is not assignable to parameter of type never. String is not assignable to never. So what is the problem here? The problem is the type of y. If we hover over y here, we can see that y is a union of prop of string or prop of number. Because k is some key of props, either name or age, y could be either a prop of string or a prop of number. And then because of that, z, the get value, could be either a string or a number. And so the type of y.set has now collapsed into a function that expects a never value. Essentially, it can't be both a string and a number, and so it's nothing. And so z, of course, doesn't work because either a string or a number cannot satisfy both of those function constraints. So how can we solve this problem? Because we know this works as JavaScript, right? We know that if we get some prop using its index k, so y is some prop, that if we call y.get, the value has to be able to be passed to y.set. And it feels like we've described that pretty accurately in our types. So how do we solve this? The solution here is a little bit convoluted, but essentially we use something called a distributive object type. The idea is that we create a type map from the particular keys of our props object here to the exact values that they should be. So let's do something like this. Let's create a prop map. And this is going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to do name is string and age is number, right? So these are kind of like the base types in our particular example, right? These are the keys that we want to have in our props object. And then these are the values that essentially will be passed as generics to our prop type up here. And so this is kind of the core information that we need. And we're mapping these to each other. Then what we can do is actually map over this type to create the type that we want for props. Now, there's two ways that you can do this, and it really depends on how complex your particular scenario is. I'm going to show you the more complex one first, and then we'll look at how we can simplify that. So we're going to create a mapped type that maps over the keys of prop map. So let's create a prop type here, and we're going to take uh, some K here. And maybe to be a little more explicit, we'll call this keys, uh, where keys extends and we know this is going to extend key of prop map. So we have some set of keys. It doesn't have to be all of these keys necessarily, but it could be. In fact, we could say this defaults to key of prop map. Okay, so now let's actually map over these. So we'll say prop in keys, and maybe to be extra explicit here, we'll call this prop name. What we can do is assign what we expect the value of this to be. So let's use prop of t. Now, what is t in this case? t is going to be the value of whatever the current prop name is in the prop map. So this is going to get a little complex, but we're going to pass in prop map. And then in square brackets, we're going to pass in prop name. The idea here now is that we are mapping from a particular property name in keys. Remember, keys is going to be the list of name and age by default using our key of prop map. 
So name is going to equal a prop of whatever the value of prop map at name is. So prop map at name, the type is string. So we'll have name prop of string. And then we do age, we'll have age prop of number. So this is the entire prop map. But then what we can do right at the end here is let's do square bracket and we'll do keys right at the end. So essentially we've indexed into the map that we just created, right? So we create this map here and then we index into it at the index of keys. So what we could do now is we could create a type for a specific type of prop. So we could say name prop could be a prop type of name. And now if we hover over this, we can see that the name prop has a get that returns a string and a set that takes a string. If we change this to age, we can see that I didn't rename it, but now it gets a number and it takes a number. And if we put some other nonsense in here, we can see that this doesn't work because ASDF does not satisfy the constraint key of prop map. So now we have a pretty complex type that describes what the value for a particular key in our final props object should be. So what can we do with this? Well, now we can actually create a type for our props. So I'm going to remove this props type down here. Let's move it up here temporarily. And then I'm going to use this to create another map. So we're going to do pretty much the same map that we did before. So we can say prop uh, in key of prop map, right? So our final object should expect to have one property for every key in the prop map object. And the value of this is, of course, just going to be prop type of that particular property. So now if we hover over this, you can see that the name has the type prop of string and age has the type prop of number. Amazing. So this feels pretty complex, but play around with this for a little bit. And I think you'll understand what's going on here. Essentially, we're mapping the particular keys of the final object that we want to create to the types that we want them to be explicitly. And this is just the first part of the solution. The second part, much simpler, but both are equally important here. Now, before we move on to that second part, one thing I want to point out is that this is the pattern that you'll see a lot in the GitHub issues that describe this problem. But these are often for situations where the inner type that you want to work with is a little more complex than our simple prop here with our getter and setter. We could actually combine these pretty simply into one type. So let's take a quick look at how to do that. I'm going to copy our prop type type here and maybe we'll call this uh, props two. the first simplification is that we don't actually need to use the generics here we can just hard code this for the keys that we know we want which is going to be all of them so we can remove that generic entirely the other thing is that we drop the index at the end so we're no longer indexing into it and this is just going to reference the entire object so now you can see that our initial props here and our new props two both have the exact same shape and of course props two is much simpler if you're still a little bit confused of what's going on in prop type and props props two here should make it a little clearer that we're just mapping over the keys in the prop map and we're creating the prop type for this so now whichever one of these you choose to use we can assign as the type for our props variable here and now let's look at our function down here so this is still not working. Of course, it's because we have the same problem. As you can see, y is still prop of string or prop of number. And so we're still getting the exact same type error. However, the second part of this trick is the key here. And I guess the key is a bit of a pun. Let's create a generic parameter for this function. So we're going to have some k that extends the key of, and which one did we use? We used props2. So we're going to use props2 here, key of props2. And then K is no longer a key, but it is of type K. And as you can see, our type error is resolved. So what exactly just happened here? Well, instead of saying that our parameter K here was a key of props two, we changed it to be some type that extends the key of props two. And if we look at the type of Y now, we can see that it's no longer completely reduced to props of name or props of string. Instead, it is props to at K. And then Z here is going to be prop map at K. And then our set function actually takes prop map at K. So why does this work? Well, to be honest, I don't 100% understand what's going on with TypeScript behind the scenes here. Essentially, by creating these more complex types and adding the generic in here, we're giving the compiler the information that it needs to know what we already know, that the result of y.get is something we can safely pass to y. Set. Of course, one of the nice things about this is that it's all very strongly linked together. So for example, we could add a date field to our prop map here, and then we'll get an error here reminding us that we have to go ahead and add a date here as well. And when we do that, we're good to go. 
So if you've seen a really great example of this or a great explanation of why this works, we would love to hear about that in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.